Hello and welcome to another Starlink in motion testing video. My name is Colby and if you haven't already seen it, make sure you check out my Starlink mini in motion testing video. This is a follow up because I got a lot of questions about using the Starlink standard, the Gen 3 standard dish instead of the mini. People wondering if it works the same, is it better? What kind of power does it use? Is it more reliable? Do I get faster download speeds while in motion? So that's what we're gonna answer in today's video. So let me get started with the setup that I'm using. I have my Starlink Gen 3 standard dish right here. I'm mounting it in the same way that I did with my Starlink Mini to the roof of my car, the glass roof. So it's gonna be on the inside suction cup to that glass. This is the Contron X uh, Gen 3 standard mount. I used their mount for uh, the Mini video as well. I really like that mount, so I'm gonna give this one a try. The Gen 3 standard dish has a lot more components to have to fit in the car compared to the Mini. So as you can see right here, I have the Gen 3 power supply. I'm gonna plug that into a portable inverter right here. This is a 300 watt pure sine wave inverter that I'm gonna plug into the cigarette lighter of the car. And then I have the Gen 3 router and the Starlink cable. So as you can see, it's a lot more complicated of a setup compared to the mini, which was basically just the antenna itself and a power cord. But this is a bigger antenna, more powerful. In theory, it should unlock some better download speeds, maybe some improved reliability, although the mini did pretty well. It also delivered some incredible reliability. In our three hour road trip that I took, I had just about two seconds, two seconds of total outages, which is pretty incredible uh, for just mounting to the inside roof wasn't expecting that, but I was totally impressed with the Starlink Mini. Let me just give you, by the way, an impression of the size difference here. So this is the Starlink Mini. Look how much smaller that thing is compared to the, the Gen 3 standard. So I will wait until the very end of the video to give you my, my final thoughts on the difference between the two for applications like this for in-motion travel use. Uh, let's get into the actual testing procedures first. So I'm going to be doing a stationary test right here in my driveway to give you a baseline of what the Gen 3 standard is capable of as far as speeds go. And then we're going to be going on a little road trip and we're going to drive and do some in motion speed testing. Also taking the iPad along to look at the uh, performance statistics as far as, you know, uptime, average latency, average power usage for the Gen 3 standard. And we'll compare all that to the results that we had for the Starlink Mini video. But first, let me get everything hooked up and I'll show you my final setup. All right, got everything installed. Let me show you the back first, just to see how I have this set up. So I've got my inverter, the power supply is plugged into the inverter, and then everything's plugged into the router down below. There's the cable all coiled up. I'll show you the, the mount and everything in a second, but this is the 12 volt outlet that I have in my car. It's just sitting right here, so I'll plug that in when I get out of the garage. Let me show you the dish itself. This is what the dish looks like mounted inside. Way bigger than the Mini, obviously, but the Contron X Gen 3 standard mount is working pretty well. We'll see how it does on the road trip, but it seems pretty sturdy. I like that it's really lightweight uh, compared to some of the other mounts, so we'll see how it does. All right, getting ready to set off. Starlink's been on for about 20 minutes now, so it's all ready to go. Let's do a quick speed test, though, while we're stationary, just to compare it. So the mini on the stationary test was around 150 megabits per second and it looks like the standard is just right around 100 megabits per second down. Uh, that could be just due to time of day. It is a couple weeks later so you know just the speed test variables there so I'm not really too worried about that. Uh, the real test will be during in motion. Uh, the mini was running around 50 megabits per second down consistently so we'll see what the standard could do as we finish up here around 14 megabits per second on the upload and 33 milliseconds for the latency. So we'll get on the highway here and check in with you for a few speed tests. And we'll be looking at the iPad as well with the Starlink app just to see the uh, performance information for latency and power usage. And I am in the passenger seat today. I've got my wife, Kelsey, helping me out so I can do everything on the screen while we're in motion. So let's get, get to it. 
been on the road for a few minutes and we're just going through some some of these like rolling hills on this state two lane highway so i thought it'd be a good chance to run our first in motion speed test as the angle of the dish is constantly changing as well as the direction as we go around this curve here quite a bit slower than the mini so far um, we're hitting it's kind of still ramping up 25 megabits per second on the download speed. And right around 20 megabits per second on the upload speed. Latency, 44 milliseconds, so good performance there. Let me just run one more just to make sure that wasn't a fluke or something. And there we go. So that's the thing about speed tests is that it's not an exact science it's just kind of a spot check at that moment in time we ramped up there well above 80 megabits per second but now we're back down to that 22 ish megabits per second down and looks like this time lower on the upload around 11 megabits per second so this is on you know like a state two lane highway kind of situation so we'll run a few more speed tests once we get up on the interstate and see how it performs there so we're underway and the first thing that I noticed is that the standard dish is a lot louder than the mini dish as far as the noise that it's emitting. So it's kind of like this high pitch uh, radio type squeal and it, it does it on the mini, but it's a lot less noticeable. If you're in complete silence in the car with no radio on or anything, it's pretty loud. Um, I would say that's one of the big drawbacks of the standard that I've noticed so far just getting underway. All right, checking in with you now. We're about half an hour in, and I'm gonna run another speed test. You can see we're on the interstate now, cruising at about 75 miles an hour. So it'll be a good chance to test out the end motion at these speeds. Let's take a, let's a quick look at the Starlink app though, and check out the statistics. Uh, we've got a 99.53% uh, ping success. Average latency has been around 31 milliseconds. Average power draw about 41 watts, which is pretty good. And as far as outages go, the only event that has happened is uh, we were, as we were turning around the interstate, we were kind of under a bridge, so we got five seconds of obstructed. I'm not really going to count that against the test here. These other two were just when the Starlink was booting up. But um, kind of surprising on the download speed so far in motion. Uh, I've been getting a lot less than what I was getting with the Mini on this same stretch of road. Uh, it's kind of been maxing out around seems like 20 megabits per second. I am on the same service plan, so this is the mini, uh, this, no, I'm sorry, the Rome 50 gigabyte plan, the same as I was using with the mini during those tests. I uh, just ran a couple speed tests here and I'm getting 15 megabits per second down, about 10 megabits per second up, and latency is still good, 33 milliseconds. So as we keep driving in different areas, I'll keep running these tests just to check, but so far it's actually been underperforming the Starlink Mini. I didn't mention this earlier, but the way that I'm testing the reliability and everything as we go along the trip, I've got the car connected to the Starlink Wi-Fi, so I'm downloading the satellite map data constantly and we're also streaming music. So that's how we're getting constant data download from the dish so that I can check on things like power usage and. Uh, reliability and everything. Uh, so far the Contron X mount has been great. The dish has not fallen on my head. Um, I am still noticing that uh, high-pitched noise that's coming from the dish. It's a lot more noticeable than the one from the Mini. So getting lots of that nice radiation directly into my head. Uh, but so far so good with the mount. Uh, check back in with another speed test here shortly. Been on the road for about an hour now. We're halfway through our trip, so I thought I'd run a speed test and check in on the statistics here. So uh, as far as outages go, still nothing, no interruptions uh, besides that bridge. And then we had a network issue for about five seconds. That's not the Starlink unit's fault. That's a Starlink network issue. So can't really count these two. So far, perfect as far as reliability goes. Um, average power draw has been 35 watts and average latency about 35 milliseconds. So speed testing, still kind of bizarre. Uh, 20 megabits per second down and about 10 megabits per second up. 
ping of 24 milliseconds on that. So pretty unusual or not what I was expecting at least for the performance as far as upload and download speeds. Uh, capping out seems like around that 20 megabit per second range. All right, back on the road again, heading home now. Um, so I did some troubleshooting on the Starlink. I noticed that on the app here, it, was, it had a pending software update. Uh, so did the Mini when I did that test, so that normally shouldn't affect anything, but I went ahead and let it update the software and I did a, a reboot while I was stopped. Um, just ran a speed test and we're at you know 75 mile an hour highway speeds and I just got 162 megabits per second down and 15 megabits per second up with 30 milliseconds latency. So that's definitely more in line with what I was looking for. So it's possible that it just needed a reboot. So on this stretch home, we'll do a few more check-ins and see if we can maintain that higher performance that we were looking for in the beginning. All right, so it looks like our problem is back with the lower download speeds, um, 17 megabits per second on this test and around 20 megabits per second upload. Still with latency around the 30 to 40 millisecond area. Um, as far as outages go on this stretch back, I haven't had anything. Um, these no signal received and everything was when I first booted up the Starlink, so uh, that doesn't count right there. But So for a total of outages so far, uh, we just had five seconds of network issues on the, the stretch out here, and then we had some obstructions when I was you know, in traffic under a bridge, so I'm not gonna really count that against it, but still having uh, the weird download speed issues. Definitely a lot slower than the Mini was on the test I did a few weeks ago. This will be the second to last check-in, uh, and then I'll give you a final update when we get back. Finally had a decent result, so I've been kind of messing around with it and running more speed tests, and uh, definitely don't think it's a hardware issue. I think it's just the Roam service plan probably and you know speed test variables. So this one right here, 138 megabits per second down and then about 12 megabits per second up, 32 milliseconds of latency on the highway here at 75 miles an hour. Um, I'll continue to run these and then I'll give you the final, uh, my final review and any updates on the check-in when we get back. Okay, I finally figured out our speed issue and it is because I am an idiot and I did not check snow melt settings. So I learned something on this test here and I guess that's a good thing about real world testing uh, that you know you can run into issues like this and it can make an interesting video or at least teach people something. So I had had the snow melt for this dish, which I normally use for camping and things like that. I had it as off because I'm running it on a you know DC conversion in my my Scamp travel trailer. Um, if you have your snow melt setting as off, you do not get the maximum performance for in motion use. That's why I was getting you know kind of maxing out at like 20 megabits per second on a lot of those tests. It was because the dish did not have the full power available for the power supply because you have that setting as off. Um, and especially when you're in motion, that's super important to be because you know you have this dish right here and it's not at the ideal angle and it's pointing straight up. It has to work harder to find those satellites. And I think that was our issue because the tests that I ran let me just show you here. This is, by the way, the, the most recent one right before I just stopped. Um, trip is over now and I've arrived at my destination. But this is the last test that I ran on the highway. 168 megabits per second down and then 15.101 up. A little bit higher latency. Uh, let me just go back to the results here. Hopefully it loads. Let me go back to find all these tests. I ran like a series of like four or five tests just real quick after I figured out the snow melt setting issue. So like check out some of these tests, like 122 megabits per second, 85 megabits per second, 104 megabits per second, and then the last one, 168 megabits per second down. With the snow melt setting on the automatic, way better, normal speeds. So I, I figured that out. Okay, so final thoughts about using the Starlink standard dish in motion. And let's compare it to the Mini a little bit as well. So 
a blunder by me not figuring out that snow melt setting until just the last leg here but i think it's pretty clear based on my testing after the snow melt setting was turned back to automatic i think it's pretty clear that the standard dish is capable of you know double the average speeds compared to the mini when you're talking about in motion use stationary they were kind of about the same i got 150 megabits per second with the mini as a, on a stationary test and with camping trips and other things like that where it's stationary i can get up to 200 megabits per second with the standard it's obviously uh capable of more than that stationary i've gotten you know 300 megabits per second in a stationary situation with the standard dish on camping trips and things but as far as in motion while you're driving down the highway you know 60 70 miles an hour even more than that in some cases the mini caps out around 40 to 50 megabits per second that's what i found in my previous video latency is great under 40 milliseconds usually uploads are great between 10 and 20 which is right where you would expect them and reliability is near perfect on the three hour road trip that i did in that previous video the previous test with the mini i got you know just two seconds of outages uh, nothing big at all never interrupted my music streaming or my map navigation data anything like that with the standard same case there so no interruptions at all i had some i had a starlink network issue that's not the fault of the dish that was just a, a starlink network issue for about five seconds other than that i got kind of stuck under a bridge so there was an obstruction outage for about five seconds on the leg back it was absolutely perfect there was nothing no interruptions at all um, except when i rebooted the router or rebooted the system to try to troubleshoot my slow speeds after i got those had that snow melt setting figured out i was able to get you know over on average over 100 megabits per second down which is about double the mini uh, uploads were in the same range as the mini actually so between usually between 10 and 20 and then latency was the same as well so i think in conclusion starlink mini versus the standard in motion i think the standard is the best if you need the absolute max performance it's not really any more reliable and you're not going to get higher upload speeds or lower latency you're just going to get those higher peak download speeds uh assuming you know you're not an idiot like me and turn the snow melt setting off accidentally uh the other big issue i wanted to mention because the biggest thing the biggest problem that i've noticed with this dish right here is the noise like let me turn climate off here i, I just want to be silent for a second to see if you can actually hear this And actually, let me take my microphone. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hope it, it, you can pick that up because that's the biggest issue, I think, with using the standard dish inside of a vehicle. If you're going to mount your standard dish on top of your RV or on top of your van or out on the outside of your vehicle, not a big deal at all. I think it's probably the, the, mini, the standard dish is probably the best option for that. Uh, but for in-car situations or portable situations, I think the mini is the best option. I, I could not stand that full time. Like if I had to have this in my car or, you know, even on just using it for road trips and things, I would hundred percent take the mini every time over this. The standard is way bigger. It's way heavier. There's a lot more equipment with a separate router, separate power supply. I can't run it directly off of uh, DC on this car. Um, I don't have the, you know, Starlink DC converter yet. But with the mini it's so simple you just plug it right into uh, the 12 volt outlet and back just one cable the router's integrated it gives you plenty of speed all that you would ever need in a car in a travel situation and you know bottom line that i think that's the mini is just the better dish overall for recreational travel in motion travel for full timers if, again if you're going to mount it on top of your roof or whatever get the standard it's cheaper it's more powerful uh that's the video uh let me know what you think in the comments below thanks for watching i appreciate it uh if you have any more ideas about more testing that you want me, want me to do with either the mini or the standard as far as in motion leave me a comment let me know make sure you like the video if you enjoyed this if you want more videos like this and we'll see you in the next one